Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Mo ICT. In this tutorial, we're going to be making a top-down car racing game inside of WPF and C Sharp. And let's take a look at what game we're going to be making. Okay, so in this game, you have a, a player car that you can move left and right. You can collect a star to get the power mode. So when you get the power mode, you don't get affected by hitting other cars, and the background changes. So the power mode doesn't last very long. So once the power mode is deactivated, then you can collect the star again to get into the power mode so this time uh, as you can see uh, we have to survive for as long as we can and if you hit another car the game ends and you can restart the game by pressing enter the longer you can survive in the game uh, the faster the other cars are going to come towards you so this would be a fun tutorial to go through uh, let's go and make a new project in visual studio okay so click on the create a new project and make sure you choose a wpf.net framework Click next name this project car racing game WPF more ICT click create before we begin download the images for this game from the link in the description extract them and then we can import them into the program so right click on the solutions click on add click on new folder name this folder images inside of uh, on the images folder here right click say add existing item okay from here you can navigate to your downloads folder where you downloaded and extracted the images and then you can go inside the folder from this drop down select image files and you'll be able to see all the images so these are the um, other ai cards that we're going to have inside the game and this is the player image and then you have these ones here are going to be animating through when we get the power up and that's obviously the star image there so select all of them click on add okay with the images added now we can go and make some changes to the game first let's add the title okay, and then set the height to 517 and to set the width to 525 uh, instead of the grid we're going to be using canvas so you can add that there set the background of the canvas to gray name set to my canvas we're going to need a focusable option set that to true set key down to one key down key up to on key up okay inside of this canvas let's add the road markings first so let's add a rectangle here Set the height to 106, set the width to 20, fill, make this one white. Let's give it a tag called road marks. Let's also set the canvas left and top for this road mark. So say canvas.left, set that to 237, and canvas.top. This one's going to be minus 152, so it'll be slightly above the canvas. Okay, so as you can see, it's been added there. Okay, so with this one done, I'm going to duplicate this line three times. So one, two, three. Okay, and because they all have the same tag and the left position is not going to change, only position that's going to change is the top. So from here, I can say first one's going to be 10, so it spaces out a little bit. Next one's going to be 176. And then 348 the minus from there so now what we do is let's go and add the other cars that's going to be on the scene let's make two more rectangles for the other cars this one a tag called car with a capital c set the height to 80 and set the width to 55 first one will be like a blue background so we can see on the screen and then if i just end the tag here you can see that it gets added there so i can just drag and drop that anyway on the scene and once i've done that it adds the canvas left and canvas top position for those as well so if i duplicate this one and then just drag that one down here just about there and set this one's background to purple all right so with that done we also need to have a player so i'm just going to duplicate this line some space move this one to the middle here so this one to yellow 
uh, make sure you get rid of that tag from here. So instead of the tag, I'm going to put a name here called player. Okay. And the last component that we're going to need in the XAML code is going to be the label. So this label is going to show the score. Okay, so name this one score text. Set the content to so by zero zero seconds. So it's just going to show how long we have driven in this particular game session. Set the font size to 18 and the font weight to bold. So we have to be right. So that's all we need to get the game UI set up. Right. So we have the player, the two AI cards, the road marks. So now we can go into the C sharp code. So before we do that, we need to add the events that we have mentioned inside the canvas. So I click on the key down, on key down, and then click on go to definition. And do the same for the on key up. Go to definition there. Okay. So first thing we're going to need is we need to use the threading namespace. So the top here, I'm using system.windows.threading. This way we can actually import the dispatcher timer. Uh, we're also going to need a few custom functions to make this game work. I've made void start game. Then we're going to need a private void change cars. Okay, so and this is going to be changing the other traffic cars on the road. Uh, we also need to pass in a rectangle as an argument for this one. So let's say rectangle, say car. Because we're going to be using a power up function, let's do a private void power up function here. We're also going to need a make star function. So it's a private void make star. Now we can go and make the variables. Okay, so right at the top, above the public main window line, let's go make some space. So the variables we're going to be making right now are the global variables. So they can be accessed through any other function. So let's go and make the first dispatcher timer. Call this one game timer equals new dispatcher timer. It makes a new instance of the dispatcher timer. We also need a list of rectangles because we're going to be creating and removing objects dynamically. This is going to be used to remove the items. So remover equals new list brackets let's make a random class new random and let's make an image brush here for the player and for the star image brush player image is new image brush okay and then image brush star image was new image brush Okay, now we're going to need a rect for the player hitbox. So I'll call this one player hitbox. Okay, we'll give the properties for this one later on inside the timer. Let's set a few integers. Say so int speed equals 15. Int player speed equals 10. Int car num. Int star counter equals 30 our mode counter equals 200 we also need a couple of doubles here so double for the score and then double i okay, let's set the booleans so because we have a few booleans, we can set them all into one line. So call for the first one, move left, then move right, game over, and our mode. Okay, so these will be the variables that we need for this game. Uh, let's set up the game timer first. Okay, so inside the main constructor, let's go here and call my canvas, and then call the focus function. So this will allow us to listen for the key down and key up events when the game is running. Let's go and say game timer dot tick plus equals game loop. So that will be the event that gets called every time the timer ticks. Okay. 
So game timeline dot interval is equals time span from milliseconds. We're gonna take it every 20 milliseconds. So it gives us a nice frame rate. Then we are going to run the start game function. Okay, so now you notice that there's a red line under the game loop. So if you highlight that line there, just hover your mouse over it. You can click on show potential fixes and then choose the first option there. And that will add the event for us. Uh, we don't need this line, so we can delete that. Since the start game function is being called here, let's start with that one. So this is going to have all the default values for this game. So first, we're going to set the speed to 8. Game timer dot start. So it's going to start the game timer for us here. Move left to false. Move right to false. Game over to false. And power mode to false. Okay, score can be zero here. Score text content equals to the vibe zero seconds. So this way we actually reset the text UI on the screen as well. Okay, let's set the player and the star image. The image the image source equals to new bitmap image inside of there we can call the new uri and inside of here double quotations say pack colon slash slash application colon three commas slash images slash layer image dot png okay, so that's the their image file here. Make sure you do this, check the spelling as well. I'm just going to duplicate this line, change that to star image, and then change the star image. So instead of the play image, it's going to look, go look for the star.png that we also imported earlier. Now we can assign the play image. So player.fill equals to player image. Okay, after that, we're going to be setting my canvas.background to brushes that are gray so default color for the background on the canvas okay, let's run a for each loop here so when the game starts we want the other cars on the road to be placed on top of the screen so we're going to run a for each loop to identify them using the tags so say my canvas dot children dot off type i'm going to check for rectangles here so say if string x dot tag is equals equals car. So if we find any of the rectangles with the car tag attached to them, we can say canvas dot set top to x inside the brackets here on a random dot next between 100 and 400 then outside the brackets we can multiply that by a minus one so it gets placed off screen okay and also say canvas dot set left x run dot next to say zero and 430 it gets placed anywhere inside the screen. The last one we're going to do is we're going to say change cars. Then we'll just pass the value of x because x is a rectangle. We're able to pass that to the change cars function, and this is going to change the cars image to any of the images that we imported earlier. Okay, so we also need to check for the star. Just say if. One second, we'll look for a string. X dot tag equals equals star then item remover dot add x so if there's a star exists in the gameplay in the beginning we're just going to remove that and add it to the item remover which is going to remove it from the canvas inside the timer okay so now let's do the change cars function let's say car num I'm just going to generate a random number here so next to say between one and six Okay, so whatever number is generated here, based on that, we're going to allow it to change the car image. So say image brush, 
uh, image new image brush and then let's run a switch to image here let's say car num there and then change the default to say case one so if the number that's generated is one then we can say car image dot image source equals new bitmap image run a new uri here inside the uri let's go back to the pack slash slash application colon three commas images and then we can choose car one dot png here okay so that would be for case one so we're going to need six cases altogether so let's go and do that okay then that to two change this to two three three four four five five six and then six yeah because we have got six cards from one to six so that's why we're generating a number between one and six here and then we'll say car dot fill equals to car image because the car is being passed in through this function so whichever rectangle gets passed in here will be attached to one of these images okay, so now let's make the power up function inside this function let's add so the i is a double so we're going to say plus equals to 0.5 so it's going to increment 0.5 each time this function runs right and say if i is greater than 4 then i equals to 1 right, so we just wanted to loop through between uh, 1 and 4 because we want to animate between these four images so let's go to switch statement let's make another one in this case we're going to look for i and inside the case one we'll do something similar but this time we're going to be going for the play image image brush so say play image dot image source it's going to be equals to you know, copy that yeah okay so instead of that it's going to say r mode one so power mode one dot png says there's only four. Let's change that to two, three, four, and four. Okay, and once the power mode actually runs, we want to change the background of the canvas as well. So say my canvas dot background equals brushes dot light coral so it shows a bit more feedback on when something has affected the player and the gameplay so now we can do the make star function so inside of here we're going to make a new rectangle old new star equals new rectangle to curly brackets and make sure you do the semicolon in the end of the last curly bracket there I set the height of this one to 50 set the width to 50 give it a tag equals to star comma and then fill needs to be the star image okay some space here right now let's set the canvas dot set left of the star new star uh, the left position is going to be rand dot next to zero to four hundred and thirty so it can be positioned anywhere inside the canvas on the left position and the canvas dot set top is going to be new star and we'll do the brackets Run dot next to say somewhere between hundred and four hundred, then multiply that by minus one. 
So it gets placed above the canvas, same as the define ID. We're gonna say my canvas dot children dot add. Then let's add the new star. Okay, so that way you actually whenever the function runs, it gets added to the canvas. Okay, so these were the custom functions that we made for this game. Now let's do the key down, key up, and then we'll finally go into the game loop. So key down and key up functions are quite simple. So if key dot key equals equals key dot left, then we change move left to true. Do the same for right. So key dot key equals equals key dot right. Set move right here to true. Okay. And then inside the key up function, just copy and paste that here. Set them back to false. Inside the key up, we're gonna have another option to restart the game. So in here we can say if e key equals equals key dot enter. So if the enter uh, key is pressed and released, we also need to check if game over is equals equals true in this case. So if game over is true and the enter key is released, then we can run the start game function again. Because the start game function has all of the default values that we need for this game. So we can run this one and then it should run by itself. And then so now we can get started on the main game loop. First, let's set the score. So let's say score plus equals 0 0.05. So we add that to the score each 20 milliseconds. And then we also say star counter is going to be minus equals 1. So it reduces 1 from the star counter value. Score text dot content equals to survived space plus score dot to string. Okay, inside of here we're gonna need to make sure that it shows the decimal point. So and then point hash. So that way it only shows one decimal point. Let's say plus do a space in the end and say seconds here. Okay, then I set up the player hitbox. In direct okay. say canvas to get left player canvas to set get top not set player again and then player dot width then player dot height okay so now let's move the player left and right so you say Move left is equal to true and canvas dot get left player is still greater than zero. So if this condition is true, let's say canvas dot set left, say player canvas dot get left again. So get the current position of the player, then we can reduce player speed from that position. So that is if the player is still inside the canvas. And then we move to the right. So if move right is equals equals true and canvas to get left player again. This time we're gonna add 90 to the width, so a little bit more padding. Say application dot current dot main window dot width. Okay, so if that is true, then we can move the player towards the right. Okay, so because we're reducing one from the star counter, we need to figure out what happens when it hits zero. So say if star counter is below one, then we're gonna run the make star function. So it's gonna create a star for us. And then we'll set the star counter equals to rand dot next to somewhere between let's say 600 and 900. So the star doesn't come too often but the player will still have to move left and right and make the game a bit more challenging. Okay, so now let's run a for each loop inside this timer. So for each for x in my canvas the children the off type rectangle. Okay, and then inside of here we can check if First one is going to be string, say x dot tag is equals equals to 
road marks so so if any of the rectangle has a road marks tag on it we can do the following two ways so first thing is going to do is canvas dot set top and so we move the x to canvas dot get top x plus speed this is going to move it down to the value of the speed and then also we're going to say if canvas dot get top x is greater than 510 so if it's gone below the screen we want to move it back up to the top again so say canvas dot set top x to minus 152 so i've done the calculations for these before and as it turns out that this was the one that worked the best okay, so you can also play around with these numbers and see which works for you better Okay, so that would do for the road marks the road mark rectangles are only going to be going down and coming back up again so it looks like we're moving further so now let's get out of this if statement here let's make another one a string x dot tag equals equals to car with the capital c so these are the other cars on the road okay and then we say converse the set top again to x canvas dot get top x and plus speed this is going to be moving pretty much the same speed as the road marks also going to check if canvas to get top x is greater than 500 so if the cars have gone below the screen okay, so then we can say here canvas dot set top to x just run a random number here dot next between 100 and 400 and then times that by a minus one and we also do a canvas dot set left x to rand dot next between zero and 430 and lastly we'll say change car and set that to x so next time when you actually get spawned to top of the screen it just changed to a different car so it looks a bit more dynamic we've done quite a bit at this point so what i want to do is i want to just test it out and see if the cars are coming down I can move left and right i stop here i can move over there as well but i stop there the scores are updating the road marks are coming down as well and cars are changing too so that's great we need to make a hitbox for the other cars. So let's go and make a new rect here. Say car hitbox equals new rect inside this new rect. So we can just get left x can just get top x x dot width and x dot height. Okay, so that's the currently is the car. So that's it because it's inside this if statement here. And what we can do is since we are running this function here, I can actually use change this line there to add it to the change cars function. So after the cars image has been changed, so instead of x that can be car, and that also can be car here so that way we don't have to run the same lines again so instead of that we can just run the change cars function so it changes the image and the location of the cars as well so if we just try to run that now let's see if that works the cars are coming down okay so it changes the color okay and the location of here as well so that way it works from one function instead of us doing the same line over and over again so we need to run two if statements here to check if the player car hit with the other cars while the power mode is off and if the power mode is on okay so let's do the first one so say if a player hitbox dot intersect with car hitbox right and power mode equals equals true right so if we hit other cars and the power mode is true then we can just run the change car function here again that way the cars will move up on the screen change and then come back down right and then let's do else if here and then we can copy and paste that again right in this case it's going to be equals equals false right 
So if it is false, then we stop the game timer. Okay, score next dot content is going to be plus equals to say space. Press enter to replay. And then we change game over to true. Right, so this this way we actually stop the interaction in the game. So we can try that now. Hit a car. So it simply stops it and says press enter to replay. And if I press enter, the game starts up again because the enter key is linked to the start game function. So now let's do the star. So let's get out of this if statement here. So we need to move the star down. So say if so tag is equals equals star. Okay, and then it's just going to be moving it down slightly faster than the other cars, or slightly slower, I think. So we're going to make it move it down by five pixels so instead of eight. And let's make another rect here and copy that over here. Say star box so because it's going to be identified with X anyway, so we could just name rename this one. Okay, and then copy that if statement over here. So if we hit with the star hitbox, we can delete that from there. Okay, item to remove to add. So we need to remove the X from there because that's the star. And then we'll change the power mode to true. Okay, so because we hit the star. Okay, so power mode counter is going to be equals to 200. So if we actually hit the star when it's spawned into the scene, remove it from the scene, and then enable the power mode, and then change the power mode counter to 200. Okay, now if, so if by chance we miss the star, okay, so if it's greater than say 400, we missed it, then we just need to add it to the item remover list. So right now we have got the star, uh, which will be spawning and coming down. So if we just, just run the game for a second to see if the star actually comes down. We need to avoid the other cars. So there you go, the star is coming down there. So we need to tell what happens when the power mode is on. Okay, so okay, this is the for each loop. So let's get out of the for each loop here and say if power mode equals equals true. So what we're going to do is power mode counter we're going to reduce that by one. Okay, run the power up function here. And let's say, for example, power mode counter is now below one. So it's because it's reducing that. And then once it's below one, we can just change power mode to false again. All of this is going to happen when the power mode is true. Okay, we also need to do an else statement here. So if the power mode is false, then the play image can go back to its default. So what we can do here, instead of typing it up, can just copy and paste that here. Okay, so you can go back to the default instead of animating. And then my canvas dot background equals brushes dot gray. So you can go back to the gray background as well. Okay, um, we also need to remove any of the items inside the item remover. So for each, we're going to change that to a rectangle. We'll be interested in rectangle items. Let's say Y inside of item remover there. Okay, so and then we can say my canvas dot children dot remove Y. So anything that's get added inside of there, we can also remove that. I think one of the other good practices to be here is maybe on the star function. So what we can say where in the end is item remover dot clear. So we don't carry on any of the other items inside of this. Okay, so it just clears up everything that's inside. Okay, so with that being done, you can actually go and try the game out and see how long it takes for it to respawn some other stars. Okay, so I'm gonna move the way here. I'll get the, oh, can't get the star now. So you remove the star when you hit 400. So you have to wait for the star to respawn again. There's a star again, so now when I collect it, I get a nice little bump. Now the car's animating, Ooh, the power mode is over. 
So it took a while for the star to come back. So that's a good thing. So what we're going to do now is we are going to set the speed of the game to change depending on the score. So the longer you survive, the faster the game gets. Okay, so still inside of the game loop function, what we can do here is say if score is greater than or equals to 10, right? And the score is less than, in that wrong here. And score is less than 20. So if it's greater than 10 and less than 20, we can change the speed to say 12. Okay, if score is greater than or equals to say now 20, right? And score is still less than 30, and speed is equals to 14. It just increments it by 2. And instead of writing it over and over, just copy that. And in this case, I can say 30, and if it's still less than 40, it's about 16. And in this case, if I've hit, um, say, 40, and then if it's less than 50, Incremented it by you know, instead of 2 and say about 18 so it gets a bit higher and then obviously if I can get 50 and instead of that I can say probably like 80 so in this case it's going to take a while for the speed to go up again so we'll just change that to say 22 we'll try that out so see how long we can survive and see if the speed actually increases Oh, we couldn't catch that. So see the speed has increased a little bit now. Move, move. Okay. All right, so speed is subtly increasing. Let's start off. All right, so the game is now working as expected. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I will have all of the source code and necessary files on the link below. Um, I will see you on the next tutorial.